Welcome to this second part of the masterclass thinking about complex urbanizing systems, which is part of the urbanizing deltas of the world online masterclass series, the state of the art of water research in South and Southeast Asia. In this masterclass series, we have invited PhDs and postdocs uh, from the NWO urbanizing deltas of the world research program to present their work with you. Um, we had an unfortunate um, second masterclass series due to technicalities, um, but Ruhl Hassan could not present his work with you, and therefore we have created this second part. Let me then also introduce you to Mr. Badrul Hassan. Um, Badrul is a PhD searcher in the NWO Urbanizing Deltas of the World project Delta Mar. Um, and Delta Mar, um, the full title is Delta Mar Governance and Hydro, Hydro Geological Prerequisites for Sustainable Water Supply Through uh, Mar Systems in Urbanizing Deltas. And they applied that in Bangladesh. Currently, he is. Um, finishing his PhD at the Copernicus Institute of Sustainable Development at Utrecht University, and he is soon to uh, defend his PhD thesis. And his PhD research topic is the governance of rural drinking water systems in developing countries, focusing on coastal Bangladesh. And that is also what his presentation will be about. Um, at this moment, he is also assistant professor at the Department of Political Science in the University of Dhaka in Bangladesh. And there he teaches um, about groundwater governance, common resource management and institutional analysis. Welcome, Badru. Good to have you here. Um, let me then also immediately give the floor to you. Um, so to present your work and after your work. Here, I and uh, Leon uh, Hermans, who is also with us here, will uh, ask some questions to see if we can get some further. So please take over and uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Yap, for your nice introduction. And uh, thanks the organizing committee of the masterclass. Uh, uh, good afternoon to all of the participants from around the world and uh, welcome you all, all to the masterclass, which is about uh, community management plus model for the governance of shared drinking water systems in coastal Bangladesh. Uh, this masterclass is derived from the project titled Delta Mar, which is uh, implemented in coastal Bangladesh uh, uh, from 2016 to 2020. It was an initiative of University of Dhaka, University of Utrecht, and TU Delft, Akashi Water, and UNICEF. Uh, this was uh, funded by Dutch Science Foundations and UNICEF. Uh, so let's have a brief uh, look at Bangladesh because it has been implemented in, our, in Bangladesh. So Bangladesh, you know, uh, it's a middle income country located in South Asia. Uh, it is the largest delta, uh, one of the largest deltas of the world uh, with uh, 180 million people, whereas uh, the freshwater scarcity is a major issue. Uh, it has been found that 25% of total population at the national level lack access to fresh drinking water. And it is more, particularly 35% in coastal areas, whereas the project has been implemented. Uh, so major challenge, challenge of this uh, drinking water scarcity are rapid population growth, socioeconomic development, climate change impact, etc. Uh, before starting uh, discussing our uh, main uh, topic, let's have a brief look at the outline of today's masterclass. Uh, I will be starting off a masterclass with the background of the study. Then, of course, I will be sharing with you the problem statement of my study. And uh, I'll be sharing with you the research objectives and questions. Uh, and then of course, the theoretical framework, which I have been followed in my study and methodology covering the research, research areas, uh, techniques and tools of data collections. And finally, finally, I will be sharing with you the findings of my study and 
uh, which I will be ending with uh, some sorts of suggestions and recommendation for the practitioners and the policymakers in developing countries. Background. As you know that uh, more than 2 billion people of the world don't have access to fresh drinking water uh, and uh, most of them are living in developing countries. Uh, in Bangladesh, nearly one fourth of the total population still don't have access to safe drinking water. And uh, it has been found in the study that uh, this freshwater scarcity lies basically in the governance crisis uh, because it has been found that around 30 to 40 percent of the community drinking water systems around the developing country, particularly in Asia and Africa, gets dysfunctional mainly due to the governance crisis. Uh, I have taken some of uh, the pictures uh, from the field, whereas I have conducted my study uh, in the coastal area of Bangladesh. You can have a look at the pictures uh, of the dysfunctional community drinking water system. And uh, it, we have, uh, I have learned that uh, uh, these community drinking water systems get dysfunctional even after, even since after six or uh, six months or one year later after their installation. So, so different governance models uh, have been experimented uh, to ensure the long-term functionality of community drinking water systems in developing country, uh, especially until the 1980s, uh, pure private or public governance arrangement uh, have been followed in order to ensure the sustainability of drinking water systems in developing country. And uh, later when the either state-based or market-based approach leads to the suboptimal performance of shared drinking water systems in developing country, then since 1980s, uh, particularly following the uh, national, uh, international water and sanitation decade, 1980s to 90s, the community-based drinking water systems uh, approach have been uh, followed in developing country in order to lead to the sustainability of shared drinking water systems. Uh, and it has been uh, uh, continued smoothly uh, actually until the end of uh, 20th century. And, but uh, uh, since the early 20, 20, uh, 20th century, when the community-based approach uh, leads to the suboptimal performance of uh, shared drinking water systems in developing countries, then the another alternative, particularly hybrid approach uh, in the form of uh, co-production, community management, uh, co-management, and community management plus approach have been followed uh, uh, to, uh, in this regard. So problem statement. So you can have a look at the model of community management approach of drinking water systems. Uh, uh, whereas you can see if there is an institutions, uh, then it leads to the collective action among the end users of drinking water systems. Uh, and in the presence of institutions, the end users uh, the, uh, provide the inputs required uh, to uh, operate and maintain the drinking water system. And then uh, end users just uh, uh, appropriate the waters from these uh, community-based drinking water systems uh, optimally. So in order to just ensure the community management plus approach in place, so institution is a must. But Problem is there that uh, in community management plus approach, there is a requirement of collective actions among the community and uh, to ensure the collective actions of uh, among the drinking water system users, there is a uh, requirement of institutions in place. But when there is no institution, then it leads, uh, leads to the uh, some sorts of uh, dilemmas, uh, for example, uh, provision dilemmas, and appropriation dilemmas. Provision dilemmas means the in the absence of institution uh, and institutional arrangement, uh, the people 
always tend to under provide the inputs required for management and production of drinking water systems. Uh, and uh, appropriation dilemma means that in the lack of institutional arrangement, people always tend to uh, over appropriate the waters from the drinking water systems that ultimately leads to the uh, that suboptimal performance of drinking water systems <laughs> in the communities. Therefore, the institution is a must. So it has been found that it has been found in the literature and also uh, empirical arena that uh, uh, people frequently face the difficulties to uh, devise the institutions to be required for collective actions among themselves. So they need the support from the external agency uh, in order to ensure the institution arrangement in their place that ultimately leads to the collective action among the resource users. So these uh, types of arrangement have been considered by many scholars in the drinking water systems arena are uh, either the co-production by Eleanor Rostrom or uh, the co-management and very recently the co-management, uh, manage, uh, community management plus approach, especially by uh, Alan Bowman in 2006. So community management plus approach means the joint responsibility between the uh, community people and also the external support agency uh, in order to ensure the smooth operation. So in the recent times, this community management plus approach has been promoted as a better alternative in the delivery of drinking water service. However, there is hardly any study to identify the prerequisites uh, that ultimately leads to the success of community management plus model in the arena of community drinking water systems. Therefore, uh, I have conducted the study in order to uh, identify the prerequisites that uh, are likely to ensure the success of of shared drinking water systems. Uh, so I have said the research objective, general objective of my study uh, was to identify the prerequisites that are likely to lead to the success of community management plus model in uh, the governance of shared drinking water systems in coastal Bangladesh. So I have also uh, split the general objectives into the four specific objectives, uh, which are the, to identify the drinking water system attributes that are likely to ensure the community preference for new improved drinking water system. And secondly, to explore the socio-psychological factors that affect the people's adoption and continued use of water from a new and improved drinking water system. Thirdly, to identify the conditions that are likely to ensure the organization and promotion of collective action among the drinking water systems users. And finally, to identify the conditions that are likely to ensure the effective collaboration between the drinking water system users and the external support entities. So to achieve those objectives, I've said the research question, the main research question of my study is, what are the prerequisites that are likely to lead to the success of community management plus approach for the governance of community drinking water system in coastal Bangladesh. Sub research questions uh, were, what are the drinking water system attributes that households consider when determining their overall preference for a drinking water system? And to what extent do the values assigned to these attributes vary across the different types of households? Then how do socioeconomic, socio-psychological factors affect the people's willingness to adopt and continued use of new and improved drinking water system. Uh, then what is the condition that explain variation in collective action among the drinking water system end users? And finally, what, what are the conditions that explain variation in collaboration between the drinking water system users and the government agency or local NGOs? This is the theoretical framework. Uh, drawing insights from different literature, for example, the common pool resource, uh, public administration, economics, sociology, political science. I have developed a theoretical framework 
which uh, are basically based on four pillar. Firstly, household preference, success of community, uh, community management plus approach, and then consideration of local context. Third pillar, uh, collective action among the users of drinking water system. And finally, collaboration with the uh, collaboration between the drinking water system users and the external support entities. So these are the four pillars which are likely to lead to the success of community management plus approach. Methodology, uh, of course, I have followed the mixed approach in my study, both quantitative and qualitative approach. And I have actually selected the two cases, uh, two particularly two community drinking water system, Bangladesh. Uh, firstly, ponds and filter. You can have a look at the picture. This is the ponds and filter system uh, from which the women are collecting water with pot. And ponds and filter system is basically a community-based drinking water system supplying the fresh water to the community people in the coastal Bangladesh. And in that PSF systems, uh, uh, water is firstly collected from the pond, and then this water is uh, pumped into a raised field, uh, filter chamber through which later water then trickle down. And finally, the people collected the fresh water uh, from that uh, filter chamber using the tap. So this is another community-based drinking water system that is in place in coastal Bangladesh, which is a managed aquifer recharge, MAR, MIR. So MAR is almost a similar technology to the PSF. So here you can see the, uh, the water firstly uh, uh, collected either from pond or the rainwater from the rooftop. And then it, uh, this water is pumped into the raised filter chamber. And then from this, that chamber, water actually goes down to the uh, underneath of the surface through few wells, five or six wells. Then people, people actually collect the fresh water using the hand pump tube well. Drinking water systems in Bangladesh. So according to the national policies and guidelines, uh, the public agency, particularly Department of Public Health Engineering installed the PSF in collaboration of the local government institute, particularly Upazala Parishad and the Union Parishad. Upazala Parishad actually coordinate the whole process of uh, implementation of community drinking water system in coastal Bangladesh. And the Union Parishad support the DPHE, I mean Department of Public Health Engineering and also the Upazala Parishad in selecting the sites based on the uh, necessity of drinking water systems in the localities. Then after the installation of community-based drinking water systems in coastal Bangladesh, then the responsibility of operation and maintenance goes to the community people who are supposed to operate drinking water system by themselves. And uh, according to the DPHE and Union Purishad also provides some sorts of uh, extra uh, supports uh, uh, to the community people when there is a requirement of major repairing of the, those drinking water systems. Research areas, uh, you can have a look at the picture of uh, map of Bangladesh and uh, from, you can have a look at the, uh, at the uh, areas which is uh, indicated by three colors. So this is the area where I conducted my study and uh, you can have a look at the, uh, the part of the maps whereas I have conducted my study. Basically, I have selected the three districts from the coastal area. Uh, namely Khulna, Shakira, and Bagherhat. Because uh, these areas are characterized by the scarcity of drinking waters and uh, also the variation in the performance of those community drinking water systems and also the low socioeconomic uh, systems in those areas. Uh, in one study, it has been found that 87% uh, of ponds and filters uh, become dysfunctional or non-functional due to the maintenance issues, cost, and lack of user friendliness. Data collection methods. 
Um, as you know that uh, I have said the four sub-research question and uh, for uh, to collect the data for each of those uh, uh, study, uh, I have followed the different tools and techniques. Uh, and for example, for the sub-research question one uh, and two, I have collected the data uh, using uh, through household survey and also the uh, secondary uh, liter using the secondary literature, of course. And uh, for sub research question three and four, uh, I have collected the data for using the uh, group discussions and key, key informant interview uh, with the stakeholders, for example, the public agency and union position. Uh, here is the findings of my of the study, and in my study, I have uh, conducted the four fieldwork uh, for each of the four chapters for uh, sub research question. So, for uh, the the first sub research question indicates uh, the community preference, which of course you know that uh, it's a part of a theoretical framework. I I, I shared with you that uh, the uh, success of community management plus approach depends on four pillars. First one, the community preference. So in my study, uh, analyzing the data uh, through the uh, conditional logit regression model, I found that uh, community preference depends on the disaster resilience, health risk free, reliability, taste of drinking water systems, which are of course the attributes of shared drinking water systems. And then, the socioeconomic uh, condition, uh, for example, household size, uh, location of the households where they are living, and uh, also, of course, the household's income also influence the variation in, in, in case of the community preference for new and improved drinking water system. And then local context. Local context, uh, of course, the matter uh, the preference and perceptions of community for the new drinking water systems. Uh, so local context I found in my study. So perceived risk, cost, taste, self-efficacy, and form and number of alternative drinking water options available in the respective communities that are also influence the community preference and also adoption of the community uh, and uh, to the uh, new drinking water systems. Then collective actions. Collective action I found in my study, collective action depends on the large group size, which of course the, uh, the uh, new actually findings, which is uh, exclusive findings because you know, in the existing literature, the uh, researchers suggest that uh, the small group size actually influence the organization and promotion of collective action. But in my study, I found that the large group size actually influence the uh, organization of collective actions. Uh, and then of course, interdependency among the uh, community people, which also uh, likely to ensure the collective actions among the community people. And then dependency on the resource systems. I found that uh, in the communities where the people are more uh, actually more dependent on the drinking water system, they're more likely to uh, engage into collective actions for the maintenance and operation of those drinking water system. And locally devised rules. Of course, uh, this is uh, actually important uh, uh, conditions that I found in my study. They, these actually uh, 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 increase the likelihood of uh, collective action among the community people. And whereas uh, uh, the people are, people themselves uh, devise the institution, I mean rules and uh, policies for operating and maintaining the drinking water system, they are more likely to engage into collective action in their community. And then collaboration with public agency it is also another important condition. Uh, whereas I found that the, there is effective collaboration between the community people and the external agency, particularly the DPHE, uh, public agency, uh, there is a more likeliness to engage into collective action. And finally, the collaboration between the community people and the external agency uh, depends on the trust between the external support agency and the community people. Whereas uh, the, in the community where there is a more trust between two 
parts between two partners, the, the community people are more likely to engage into collaboration with the external support agency. And transparency, of course, it, it, it appears as a major uh, conditions uh, uh, in collaboration between the two, uh, two partners, I mean public agency and the uh, community people, where there is a uh, open, transparent uh, policy making, rules making, and what's the going on people, if people are well informed regarding the information and data, what's going on about the installation and implementation of drinking water system. So whereas I found that people are more likely to engage into collaboration uh, with the external support agency. And finally, inclusive decision making. It also appears another important condition which actually influence the uh, effective collaboration between the public agency and the community people. Because people, when people are engaged, are, are called upon to uh, participate in the decision-making process about the planning and the implementation process of shared drinking water system in the community. So the people are more likely to engage into collaboration uh, between the external support agency, particularly public agency. So based on those findings of my four chapters in my study, I have come up with the model of uh, the prerequisites of the, for the success of community management plus approach, uh, which is uh, basically depends the, the community management plus approach. Uh, success basically depends on community preference, I mean people preference and perception that, are, that should be considered as the point of departure for the planning and implementation of new drinking water systems in the communities. And because where there is a people preference, actually, if there is an alignment with the local people's preference, it actually helps to uh, increase the commitment of the people to the governance and effectiveness of the support, to the governance of uh, the drinking water systems in the community. And of course, I found that people's preference vary from the local context, socioeconomic context, psychological context, uh, so that's why I have found another pillar that there are no panacea, that only, the, it, it, I cannot consider only one model as a blueprint, there is no panacea. So it, it varies from context to context. That's why, so local context should be considered in order to understand that what are the local people's preference, what their needs, and that are basically deep, uh, be, uh, varied based on their socioeconomic psychological conditions. So that's why I come up uh, with, uh, in my model that local context should be taken into account uh, while planning and implementation of a new drinking water systems. And then of course, uh, there, should be the collective, there should be collective action among the community people, but the empirical uh, uh, evidence suggests that uh, people give, uh, due to the uh, decreasing of voluntarism and also the heterogeneity uh, among the people in terms of uh, political ideology and also the clans, socioeconomic status. So people are less likely to engage into collective action these days unless or until there is a, some kinds of external intervention, external support in place in the community level. So whether it, it should, it can be in the form of uh, monitoring, in the form of financial support, in the form of motivation, encouragement so in the community. So the, the external support should be in place in order to facilitate the collective action uh, among the community people in order, to, uh, in order to ensure the smooth functioning of shared drinking water systems. So I come up with the conclusion that if there is there are four pillars goes together, then it, it is more likely to ensure the success of community management plus approach. Finally, uh, I would like to come up uh, with some sorts of suggestion and recommendation for the policymakers, donors, and the practitioners. Those are basically involved into the planning and implementation process of shared drinking water system in the community uh, in the coastal Bangladesh. And this actually findings can be, uh, can be repeated, can be, uh, uh, can be utilized in other areas of developing country with, the, uh, with more or less similar socioeconomic context of Bangladesh. So 
I found I I, I should uh, I I would like to suggest those policymakers and practitioners uh, to follow that uh, the people's preference and perception should be first assessed before the planning and implementation of a drinking water system, because just I found in our in coastal areas I have worked in different areas of that particular region and uh, I have also found that the people's perception and preference varies from community to community. So it depends on the socioeconomic context. It depends on their psychological context. For example, uh, just from our glance, we know well that uh, the pond water is not actually good as much as we are just thinking. It's actually, no, but I found from the older generation, older people, that they are more likely to uh, have the pond water rather than the tube well or supply water. So that's actually depends on the perception. So that's why I have come up with the suggestion that the before installation of a new drinking water system, of course, the community people's preference and the needs, their perception should be assessed first. And then as this preference varies from socioeconomic, geological, and also psychological, psychological context. So of course, uh, this socioeconomic context should be taken into account uh, while planning and implementation of a drinking water system. And then the, to ensure the smooth uh, collective action among the community people for the operation and maintenance of those drinking water system, so external support should be in place in order to facilitate the community people uh, for the collective action. Then effective collaboration. Today in the existing policy, there is a just a stipulation that uh, in case of major repairing, the external agency, I mean public agency uh, should, be, should actually provide the support in case of major repairing, but there is no actually formal structure of collaboration between the community people and also the public agency. Therefore, I have come up uh, with a suggestion that there should be a formal structure, which actually indicates that how and what condition uh, should be in place in order to ensure the smooth and effective collaboration between the public agency and the community people. And finally, that's the very important recommendation then I would like to come up with the formal, there should be a formal structure of keeping record about the scarcity of drinking water and also the availability of number and type of drinking water system in the communities. So if there is the formal structure of keeping record in place in the community, it actually helps to, it, uh, it will, uh, my, it will uh, help to actually ensure the smooth functioning of drinking water system. It could also help to uh, that remove the chance of non-functionality of shared drinking water system in the community. Because in my study, I have found that uh, the donors as well as the implementing agency just uh, provide the shared drinking water systems in the community without uh, assessing the needs and also the availability of drinking water system in the particular place. If there is a fund, so they are actually very eager to uh, use the fund installing the new drinking water system, uh, uh, whether the people needs or no don't need the drinking water systems. So that's my actually major uh, recommendation that I have come up in my study that there should be a formal structure of keeping records and in the about the scarcity of drinking water and also the availability of number and types of drinking water system. And in that case, the local government institute can play the role in this regard. So that's the end of my today's masterclass. Thank you. Thank you for your kind attention. Now feedback, a question. Yes, thank you, Badru, for your interesting um, presentation. Um, I do have uh, myself also written down some uh, questions that I have for you, which I would like to discuss with you. But uh, I'm first going to give the floor to, um, to Leon, uh, who is here with us. 
Okay. Um, thank you, Yab, for giving me uh, the chance to first ask my questions and uh, maybe I leave some for you. <laughs> and, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Badru, for, uh, for sharing with us your, your, your research into this community management plus and, and how that uh, works for the, for the local drinking water systems in the uh, urbanizing deltas of areas of, of coastal Bangladesh. That is, it was very interesting to, to hear this. Um, I have one question that that uh, was a bit. Uh, I'm a bit intrigued by your findings on the um, on the collective action, where you mentioned that hey, normally we expect that maybe smaller groups um, uh, seem to have a more positive influence on collective action. But you mentioned, I think, if I if I got it correctly, that actually your findings had a, a larger group size may have a more positive effect on collective action. Um, but you also mentioned later on that actually there is, uh, th these groups are not necessarily uh, homogeneous. There might be actually quite some differences between the community uh, water users. So I, 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 am, I am quite uh, intrigued by, by this finding. Maybe you, you have an idea why still larger group sizes may, may be more positively linked to collective action in, in your, in the communities that you have been, been looking at? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Leon, for your good question. Yeah, it's an interesting question. So, yeah. Uh, in my study, I have found that uh, large, larger group actually influence the uh, organization of collective action because it might be the fact, it might be the, due to the fact that uh, uh, community-based drinking water systems requires the different source of inputs like uh, money, labor, time, and the communication with the external support agency. As there is, if there is a if there is a requirement to arise uh, for major repairing. So in that case, uh, in the area in the communities that I have conducted my study, so they are much uh, lag behind in terms of socioeconomic status. You know. So that's why some people might be able to provide the uh, labor, but they might not be able to provide the money and also time and also the external uh, communication. So that's why if I, I found that if there is a uh, the larger group, so different types of people like educated, uneducated. So, so this actually uh, my, uh, ensure the smooth functioning of uh, the drinking water system and also the organization of collective action among the community people. So that I, I, I guess, but it, it requires the further study that why actually larger group that influence the collective action uh, in the study area. No, but it's interesting, and I think your 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 explanation also makes makes perfect sense to me. But it is indeed a bit counterintuitive but but it means that actually this these differences between the groups they actually also enable them to sort of exploit the differences because they can have different contributions that maybe in smaller groups are more difficult to mobilize because they may be more uniform in what they can do and what they cannot uh, do so that yeah. that is yeah that that makes sense and but it's it's interesting to indeed also then then realize that sometimes maybe heterogeneity can also be a source of collective action so that's really yeah, interesting yeah. thanks yeah. can i can i ask something else is that is yeah, that sure. okay yeah sure. yeah yeah of course yep. and i was also thinking in relation to this question because uh, there might also be maybe some sort of an optimum uh, here right so that there's smaller and bigger is maybe a little bit better but too big is also losing then the cohesion Within the uh, within the com community for collective action, but yeah, so I was also intrigued by this. Uh, but please continue. Uh, later. Yeah, so no, that's, that's nice. Uh, the the other the other thing I was also wondering about. You didn't really uh, uh, talk a lot about it, but you you mentioned of obviously the, the important role of the um, let's say the external support um, structures and the and the actors or the stakeholders that are active there. Um, and, and you mentioned, uh, for instance, the, the public department of uh, public health engineering, um, the local village councils, I think, the Union Parishat and the Upazila Parishat. And yeah. um, I think there is also often a role for, for some NGOs uh, sometimes yeah. to, to be yeah. played in supporting them. Um, do you know how these 
entities among themselves interact with each other to to offer also sort of a streamlined support and 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 does it matter how they interact with each other did you look into that yeah very good question leon very good question yeah uh, it's uh, there is actually rules guidelines in place that stipulates the engagement of external support external agency it might be the public agency dph i mean particularly and the union parishad i mean local government institute union parishad and upazila parishad and also the local ngos so in our policy national policy there is there are the uh, uh, stipulation of engagement of those entities into the uh, 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 installation and also implementation of drinking water system but unfortunately there is a lack of uh, formal structure of the coordination among themselves so that i would like to suggest in my study so there should be a coordination structure and also the clear cut guidelines rules indicating the roles and responsibilities of all the stakeholders i mean actors in the drinking water systems provision and supply so that's i another uh, suggestion in my study so there is a lacking currently in our country context yeah okay thank you and then uh, um, i'm also interested to hear uh, yap's uh, view on on your presentation and the questions that uh, that you triggered with with him so i'll i'll uh, i'll stop here but thank you yeah thank you uh, leon and thank you uh, badru um for the question answer you give um i actually had written down similar questions at leon but i also have another one um and that relates um so you remark for uh, water supply planning that you first need to assess the preferences of the the, the community members um and yet then next you tell um like that you told that the elderly preferred for example pawn uh, water from ponds and it sounded to me that is basically that they preferred the system that they are already um using or are very much aware of um which from an outsider's perspective might not the best kind of water supply system either for their health or for um environmental sustainability or um <clears throat> so my question is basically so if the preferences of the different people in these communities are actually based on the systems that they know how could we then contribute to increase their knowledge on the the different water supply options so to to create their uh, to enlarge their knowledge base basically to to um, further enhance their uh, yeah their choices and preferences yeah yeah very interesting thank you very much yeah, for your nice question yeah i shared in my lecture that uh, the people's perception uh, just varies uh, from man to man which are basically dependent on the perception perception and also local context norms values so you have been correctly correctly pointed out that some people those who are older generation they have been used to have the pond water and they have been using those water from time from generation to generation that's why they are not willing to come out of the, the that cycle uh, but the new generation those who are conscious those who are aware about the health hygiene so they are more likely to use the fresh i mean supply or the another uh, hygienic drinking water systems so that's why i i, I come up with the uh, recommendation that of course that the the donor or the policy maker should actually the assess the people's preference and also the perception that varies from local context i mean socio economic geological and psychological context so that's why of course there is a uh, little bit uh, uh, concern about the lack of consciousness among the community people as they are socio economically backward so that's why i come up with the suggestion that uh, the policy maker should also uh, invest some time some energy and also money to make them aware about the uh, the hygiene and their health condition yes uh, thank you and and is this maybe also not um, sometimes then because you, hey, you also mentioned a lot of these um, systems are developed uh, with external support so is this same kind of um, 
preference thinking or bias also not seen uh, among the NGOs then that are uh, introducing this. So, so how to deal with that as, as a local authority may be responsible also for public health and water supply? Uh, so uh, if I understand properly your question, then I like to that local NGOs are basically engaged into uh, uh, engaged to uh, provide the uh, uh, provide the some sorts of supports in terms of awareness building, capacity building. So in my study, I have found that NGOs are found uh, effective to actually provide those kinds of external supports. Uh, to the community level and uh, local authority i mean but but there is some source of uh, lacking of formal structure whereas there is a clearly mentioned that what ngo and how ngos could play their part in making the community people aware about the new and improved drinking water systems so that's a lacking in our national policy but there is a just word saying that ngos should support the a public agency, I mean DPH, but there is a lacking of uh, structure or rules that how and what types of NGO can actually give that kind of support to the public agency. So that is also another requirement to consider by the policymaker while planning and implementation of drinking water systems. And then uh, I think a final question. Um, um, what is your um, what is it, maybe in one sentence? What is your main message that you want to share um, with the, the community around uh, drinking water supply in uh, rural communities for um, delivering a sustainable uh, flow of uh, water supply for these communities? Yeah, my based on my study and my field experience, I should convey the message that the Policymaker and practitioners, donors, while planning and implementation of community drinking water system, they should, of course, consider the local preference and also local context, apart from thinking of collective action among the community people. Because currently, there is a policy, you know, uh, there is a actually requirement in our policy that after installation of the drinking water system by the public agency, then the operation and maintenance should be performed by the community people but they are not in uh, they are not actually thinking that whether and how much they are capable to operate and maintain by themselves so that's why the external support should be in place in order to make the drinking water system more durable and functional good Thank you, uh, Badrul, for that final uh, message. I'm going to thank you for your very interesting presentation. I've um, enjoyed it very much. And uh, with these um, words, I'm also going to thank uh, Leon for his uh, contribution and participation in this discussion. So thank you both. And um, I am then also telling to the people who have watch this uh, video to join us next time again in our other masterclass series or re-watch some of the previous recorded masterclasses in this series. Thank you very much. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, both of you, Jan, uh, Yep, and Leon. Thank you. Thank you.